how y'all doing? Fat Guy Flies RC here. Um, today, as promised, I want to do a follow-up video on the OMP Big Porn, uh, Big Horn, uh, Big Porn, <laughs> the Big Horn um, um, that was that I put together last night. I um, did the unboxing yesterday, and I said that if I found things that or beyond the build video that I suggested you watch that I didn't do, obviously, that on the website they have one, the link for this purchase of this plane. Um, I included the, the YouTube video on how to put this plane together, and it explains it so much better than I could. So, you know, I want you to have the best information, not necessarily always from my side or somebody else, but what I feel is the best information. So in case you get this plane, you know, or any plane, you know, I will get you the best information, regardless of where it comes from. And um, so anyways, back to what I did find for myself. One thing, the magnets on the top hatch here are very, very strong. So, now look at this on camera now, I can't even get it up. Um, I did the little plastic, or plastic, the tape uh, thing. Uh, so I can take the, the little, made a little tape tab there. Um, just to show you my setup on the inside, um, put the AR620 antennas receiver in there, and I put the provided uh, Velcro tape down um, for the battery, and there is a strap, it does include a strap, and uh, well, that was part of my problem, I had my decals on my, yeah, um, that are all put together, obviously. Um, Decal, since it does not include any instructions, I just put the decals, you know, dead reckoning where I thought they should go. And uh, so that's something you'll have to contend with. You know, put them where you think. I put them down here and down here. And I put the 49, which refers to the 49 inch wingspan on either side of the rudder. Um, now, specific things that uh, normally you have to measure. When you do, anytime you're going to glue in a horizontal stabilizer on ARF, you want an ARF, you want to measure. And what I did to make sure that way your tail, your, when you go up, you're not going to have it going one way or the other by default. So what I did was I measured, let me move this chair out of the way. I measured from the tip of this wing here to where this joint is. And I believe it was 21 and a quarter inches. And, I, and once it went in, it pretty much was right on spot just by the way it slid in. So that was that. So that was nothing out of the ordinary. Um, as in regards to this spinner, when you take this spinner off, if you notice, you've got a little screw hole there, screw hole there, and a screw hole there. That's where that spinner goes. There's actually a, a, a threaded hole on the inside of the metal part of the spinner so you have to line that up so make sure the hole on the metal black plate back plate is one on top and one on bottom and then make sure you're when you put your prop on that it's exactly level so that way your 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 spinner cap will line up with those holes i had to kind of monkey around with that after I'd put it on, I thought, well, it just screws on. No, you have to line it up. So I had to take the prop back off and then get it lined up just right. Luckily, the, the, lot, the prop anchors down really quick. And so once you get it positioned, you're good. And then you can monkey around and get that in there. Uh, the prop, I balanced it. I didn't have to balance it. It was perfectly balanced from the factory. So I, didn't have, I, I checked it. It was fine. Um, one thing you're going to notice, your leads for your elevator and your rudder are not, are just barely show up at the end of the wood right here. So you might, just to make your life easier, put some extensions on there. It'll just make your life easier. You know, just go ahead and get a couple of like five, five inch extensions just so you've got room to maneuver. I, I suggest that. Now, the other thing though, however, that it's not in the instructions is ball link control horn or control rods all around right fine however 
They don't tell you which is which. You've got four that are the same length, okay? They're the four that you use, you know, two for your elevator and two for your uh, aileron, okay? Also, and you've got two that are longer, and that's the ones for your elevator and your rudder. And of those two, one is longer than the other. The longest one goes for your elevator. The slightly shorter one is for your rudder. Like all models, you should do this anyways, no matter what the model is, center your servos first. Because I'm gonna tell you something, on these control rods for the elevator and the wing, and the, the elevator ones, make sure they're all the same position as in the ends that screw on, the clevises that screw on and screw off. If you, if you start doing trimming to try to make them level and everything, they don't have much give. So if you do four turns on one end of it, you gotta do four turns on the other end. So, you know, the opposite direction. So you've gotta make sure you, you keep them optimized as far as their, of, of, uh, of their grab on, their th on the threads, if you follow me. Um, which means, what I'm saying is the little clevis part that screws on will, if you keep, if you keep adjusting trim using that one only, it's gonna come right off. So you've got to, move that rod, the threaded rod, between the two clevis ends. So in other words, you screw a little, if you, if you unscrew this one th three turns, you need to screw this one three turns, and, and, and therefore, and so on. And that way, you know, um, you'll be able to um, still have good bo positive bite and not use, uh, and not have a, a bad connection. I wish the, uh, the control, or the, uh, I can't talk, the uh, ball link uh, connection or control rods, I wish they were a little bit longer and give you a little, give you a little more adjustment ability, but they're okay. Um, they do the job. Also, the servo, the um, elevator or the uh, flap servos, one of them is not reversed. So you're gonna have to have um, another channel so that so you need at least a six channel receiver for this even though you don't have gear you're going to use that six channel because you're going to have one lead for your one right flap and one lead for your left flap and you're going to have to mix them in order to get them to come down like flaps okay and then of course you can go in there and monkey with them and and do a complete a complete wing aileron or, or flapperons, however, but just be aware that these servos on the flaps, they're not, there's not one that's reversed, okay? So you're going to have to mix it in order to make them work like traditional flaps. Just be aware of that. Um, but that's great. If you're going to do a lot of the, the crow and other stuff like that, you, you would need that. So, but other than, other than the, the only negative of this build, honestly, is these uh, ball link control rods. They're not long enough and not um, adjustable enough to where they need to be a little bit longer to give a little more adjustment so that I can have more, more comfort level and know I got good connection. But so you just be aware of that. They, these do work. They will work from the factory. You just have to be careful. You know, so many turns on one end means so many turns on the other end. And when you have the control rod in your hand, you'll understand what I'm saying. Other than that, I wish they included an instruction manual, so I don't know where the, um, off the top of my head, where the CG is. I typically go with the CG uh, either on the uh, wing spar or, or maybe like two finger links. And I don't have a battery in there, but I put a uh, 3200 30, battery in it, three cell, and about two inches in, she balanced just perfectly. So I'd ha I'll have to refer to the manual. Um, I'll include a link to that manual I'm talking about in the post-build uh, overview that I'm doing of this video here. But like the only negative I've got is the uh, uh, ball link control rods. They just aren't big enough and not uh, adjustable enough to my taste. But they do work. So that's that. Other than that, it was it went together so easy, amazingly simple. You know, the 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 CA hinges in the rudder, the rudder section, were already glued in nice and tight. I only had to put CA in three places, thin CA 
in three places just to attach the rudder. And, it's just, and it was just like, just like he talked about in the film. He just right up to it, in the video, right up to it, three, three dots of CA on either side, and it rock solid in there. So quality hinges, quality plane. Yes, this plane is $300 with based by tax and shipping. And so far, what I'm seeing is worth it. Um, I, um, it's a beautiful plane. <laughs> Can't wait to fly it. If I get some time off from work, I might actually be able to do it. I'm here of an evening doing this, and I'm going to go to work tomorrow. So, But that's life, right? That's what pays for these planes. Well, folks, thank you so much for watching. I hope the things that I have found will help give you a little more education as far as your purchase. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, real quick. The, the wings, you got your two wings, your two uh, leads come in, but screw in nylon connectors to hold that wing in. But the plane is only 49 inches, so you shouldn't have to be taking the wing off. But if you did, you have two connections and one nylon screw to, to undo uh, with a handle, a little uh, thumb screw, and one wing slides right off. So there you go. just want to share that with you. And there you go. This is just your, your radio hatch. Nice, solid metal connector there to, hold, to grab a hold of. Solid magnets. So there you go, folks. That's all I got to say about the OMP Bighorn. Cannot wait for the Maiden. And this is one awesome looking plane. And I'm, I'm thinking she's going to fly just as awesome as she looks. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And you people are my sponsors. Bye-bye. Turn the camera off now. Mm.